Look at my goosebumps. What the f is going on? Hey guys, welcome to the Chrysler Mansion. They found Edward shot behind the factory. They actually took the body back here and used to do seances because he wanted to find out if Edward was murdered or if he really committed suicide which to this day is still a mystery. Uh, there was a murder here in 2005. So uh, recently. So pretty recently. But he just got scratched a couple weeks ago out in the back. He, he, he had a bunch of scratches on the back of his leg. I would say this place is haunted. I've heard things, seen things, felt things. Look at that wet spot. Does that look like a wet spot to you? That is absolutely dry as could be. And it happens here and the floor around us. Two main kids was Alfred and Henry. They died on the property. Who is this that I'm speaking to? Are you talking about the mirror? Is the mirror a portal? The top light burned out right in front of us. Uh, Holy! What? Holy! What the f oh, This has to be the most activity we've ever gotten before we even start the video. On tonight's episode of The Paranormal Files, we are in the real-life haunted mansion, the Kreischer House here in Staten Island, New York. The macabre stories from this house's past include a business magnate who took his own life in the courtyard, children who lost their lives in mysterious ways, and even a brutal murder that happened right here in the home in 2005 in the exact spot in which I'm standing. So join us tonight on this spooky adventure through one of the most haunted homes on the entire East Coast. My name is Colin Brown, and welcome to the Paranormal Files. All right, we just got here in Staten Island, New York. Connor? Welcome to the Chrysler Mansion. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that's dope. <laughs> Opening the gates to the haunted mansion, baby. Let's go. That's an ominous way to start a ghost hunt. I like Big it. ass creepy gate. Yeah. No, oh good. shit. If you have a haunted location, get a cool gate. You can open up like this. <laughs> Honestly, great way to start a video, man. There it is. Let's go. Damn, dude, this house really is spooky looking, isn't it? This is pretty creepy looking, dude. I mean, it literally looks like the haunted mansion. It really does. Yeah, and the stories of this place are just as creepy as it looks. I'm excited to check this place out. I don't know if I'm excited, but uh, there's no other choice. That's good. <laughs> Before we begin tonight's journey into the afterlife, I must step in and warn you. As your ghost host for the evening, I feel obligated to let you know that at times, ghosts and spirits have been known to come through screens and haunt those who watch YouTube videos like this one. And the Kreischer Mansion is full of ghosts, almost 999 of them in fact. So if you are easily afraid or disturbed by chilling true history, you should reconsider viewing this video. After all, you never know when a hitchhiking ghost might just choose to follow you home. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Chrysler Mansion. Let's take a walk in. Hey guys, welcome to the Chrysler Mansion. It's in Chrysleville, New York. This was uh, called Chrysleville back in the 1800s. Thousands of Kreischer, the father right here, he uh, was a German brick maker in Germany. He came to New York when uh, New York City had the fires back in the 1800s. Came to New York City to help rebuild New York City. Opened up a small factory in Manhattan. Came to Staten Island to open up uh, a bigger factory here to make bricks to send them back to the city. Opened up a factory right across the way here, right on the water, and used to ship the bricks to Manhattan. And this is his son Charles Kreischer and Edward Kreischer. Both his sons who we built two mansions for here too. He also built the whole town, which was uh, called Kreischerville back in the day. It was a factory town. He had all the workers. He built the saloon. He built the general store. He built the post office. 
and you put everybody to work in the whole town. And uh, it got changed back to Ch Charleston uh, after we went to war with the Germans. They took Chrysler away from, away from them. They renamed it to Charleston. And uh, that's what it sits today as Charleston. So they took that away because we were fighting the Germans. We were fighting the Germans. <laughs> Interesting. Right? That's we funny. Fighting the Germans. It's fucked up. That's fucked up. He didn't he do anything. Helping, he didn't do nothing. He was helping New York rebuild. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he, he, he actually came here, opened up the factory here, had a factory in the city, and uh, actually invented the fireproof brick. Wow. <clears throat> Ironically, yes. <laughs> to help rebuild the city. So he actually came here to help, and then they wound up taking the town away from him. So, as the story goes, Palazzo wasn't finished with his stuff. So he's still lingering around here because his job wasn't done. So him, Edward, Charles, and a whole bunch of other spirits are still living in his house. This is just like some uh, architect that they used to have back then. This is called an encrusta. It's a combination of, it's leather walls. It's a combination of leather and linoleum. They used to do it in the 1800s a lot. Bowser did the whole hallways here with, with all that and stuff for the sons. This was actually Charles's house. <clears throat> Edward. After oh. Bowser the... Did you hear that? That was a scream. That was a scream. What do you think that is? I don't sound like a little scream. <laughs> it really did! Yeah. What the fuck? Like from third I'm floor. telling you, we've been hearing this all night. From right here. From right, 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 right here too. specifically. Okay, anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, that's all right. Bowser all passed away. Charles and Edward um, actually took over the factory, which was right across the way. Edward was having trouble with the workers. He was fighting with his brother after Balzazar died. And uh, basically, uh, they found Edward shot behind the factory, which was right across the street from the mansion. They didn't know if he was died. They didn't know if he got murdered. They actually took the body back here, and they brought it into this room right here. His brother Charles brought him in here and used to do seances because he wanted to find out if uh, if Edward was murdered or if he really committed suicide, which to this day is still a mystery. And uh, that's how the rumors go that he uh, opened up some doors that he never shut. So they, had these, they brought it here, they had seances here, and uh, they tried to talk to Edward. What kind of seances were they doing? Uh, well, he was trying to find out if, if he could talk to Edward. Uh, back in the 1800s, seances were kind of happening they, they did him a lot they were just he was just trying to find out if uh if he was murdered or if he committed suicide. ironically dr washington who was a doctor who lived about a mile or two down the road pronounced edward dead and and edward's wife married him six months later so there's more to that story story <laughs> so that's why they were saying they think it was murdered but there was a whole way of how the gun was you know, how, how the bullet went into his head and stuff. So they brought it here, so his brother was trying to communicate, and, uh, and that's the story that goes for here. Were they doing like Ouija boards or like? I think they were doing Ouija boards back then. They were, they were doing seances, Ouija boards, etc. Wow. Yeah. Right here, so this would be like the portal room. This is what I've been told. This is one of the portals in this house. Are these original mirrors? That's original mirrors. Wow. Original mirrors, original ceilings, original mirrors. And uh, of course, the encrusted the leather walls are original, but all this is original. Fireplaces here, if you turn around, these are all original fireplaces and mantles, all with the Chrysler bricks here, <laughs> uh, and the original fireplaces, mantles, mirrors, etc. I think I wore the perfect shirt for today. But the factory became bigger and bigger. Bowser's uh, when he came here, he. Uh, opened up the factory. He was actually, was one of the investors into the Staten Island Railroad. So he started the Staten Island Railroad. His daughter actually married a Steinway, because they were from Germany too and moved to America. Interesting. So his daughter married a Steinway. He funded the Steinway piano fortune that's still going to this day. Dang. And if you go out to Queens, New York, the whole building is built with Chrysler bricks. So he built the building, financed them, financed the Staten Island Railroad, all from brick making. This guy's like was pretty a, substantial in history. Honestly. Yeah, he was, he was rich rich back in the 1800s. He, oh, was, yeah. he, he was a rich man. And he had the whole town going. He, he, this was a factory town. He said he was a really nice guy. If somebody didn't show up for work, 
He drives through town calling their names, picking them up, getting them in a the car, paying for the whole day, and bringing them back to the factory to work. <laughs> <laughs> and then he built a saloon down the block, which is Kilmeyer's. It's, it's a German saloon, it's still, still standing to this day. And uh, that, they used to hang out in there. He built the, like I said, he built the post office, a general store. He had housing across the street for workers. He built housing up right here on Chrysler Street, which is across the street, and then the factory was right there. It's funny to think if they didn't show up for work, he would go also to the bar that he owned yes. to make sure they weren't passed out there. <laughs> and if they weren't there, then he'd go to the housing that he owned right. to make sure they were at their house. <laughs> yeah, you pick them up, bring yeah. back to work, you, you pay them for the whole day. You could just not show up to work when you, when you work for the Chrysler family. <laughs> exactly. You own the town. Yeah. You get caught, caught in the deli, you get caught in the post office. Oh, yeah. You get caught in his own saloon. <laughs> So he actually he actually came here. The reason he actually built here and made the factory here, because there's a there's Clay Pit Pond, which is a pond right behind us, about not even a quarter mile away. And he came here because of the clay. So we built when New York burnt down, he, he went to the city, built a small little factory in, in the lower east side, came here and built a monster factory, which I'll show you guys on one of the pictures inside. Built a monster factory here, got the clay from right here, did the bricks here. Put them right on boats, shipped them right out. So he lived behind this mansion, up on a, the tier back here, another little hill here. He lived there for like 20 years. Then he built this house for Charles and house right next door, matching houses for his two sons. <laughs> this is the only mansion still standing. In the Widow's Peak, the terraces up top, they could actually stay and look down, look onto the factory dock and see what boats were going out. Wow. So, so they kept track of everything. Oh, this is a man with a plan. Yeah. Man, man with a plan, man with a dollar. You know? <laughs> man with a plan, man with a dollar. He was liked. Bowser was liked. He was liked all over the whole time. Everybody said that he was great. When he passed away, his sons took over the factory. They had a little hard time. They had a fire. Factory burnt down. They rebuilt it. Um, and then Edwards slash Myrtle uh, was another hit. Hindens and then uh, Charles was whose house this is. Um, so Charles kept the factory going for a while, and then it crumbled again. And it was finally done in the uh, early 1900s. They ran a factory town. That's what they did. So what's the leading like thought behind why Edward would want to take his own life? That's a big question. You know, with his wife marrying a doctor that pronounced him dead, brought up a lot of uh, suspicion that. Maybe it was murder. As the story goes, he was having a lot of trouble with the workers. He was fighting with his brother a lot because they had financial problems after Bowser died because uh, the factory burnt down. They had to pay to get it re rebuilt. You know, stress, I guess, if, if, if that's the way it went. But uh, then when uh, she married the doctor, it kind of to a monkey wrench into the whole situation. That is a weird twist, I would say. And you gotta remember 1800s here, there wasn't much around, you yeah. know? Right. The doctor lived like a mile down the road. There's Main Street down here, a small town down here called Tottenville, and this is Charleston there, right? Button Towns. Yeah. So it wasn't far, you know, stuff like that. So, But that is a successful business, like I said, and they started the Staten Island Railroad, and then they started the Steinway fortune, too. I keep hearing noises. Yeah. <sighs> so, so I think this is pictures right here of the factory here. I don't know if you guys can zoom in on it. Oh wow, that's a factory. That's a factory there. I might have a better shot. But the houses were back here, and this is the whole dock. This was all on the water across the street. Wow. So they used to sit at the house. The houses were right here, see? There's two of them. Mm -hmm. They used to stay at the peaks. They could look out where boats were going out. This was the factory. And they used to load it. That's load it out. This is an old flyer. That's so cool that you have that. Yeah, I got, I got some stuff. I got some more stuff in here. So I was also, let me ask. What's up with these dolls? These dolls got a little history. They're just, uh, we have an in-house paranormal guy. One was found on Staten Island. This one, we actually have video, video of her eyes moving. Oh my God. We, yeah, we, I'm good. We've, we've caught videos of her eyes moving. It was by chance, it was a friend of ours. I was standing here talking and uh, filming. Didn't notice it then. We noticed it about a week or so later. She, Brought it back here, came back, and uh, we, we looked at it, and, and we, we definitely think our eyes were moving. God. 
The other one, that has a couple of stories in itself too. So that's why we keep we just keep them in here. Great, might as well add it's, more it's, ghosts. That's, it might as well <laughs> add more to the picture. Or just add more to the picture. Okay, this is the both houses here. We're actually in, in the house to the left. That's uh, the Charles and Edward's house. The one to the left is the one we're in, Charles's, and that's the one to the right. They're identical houses. They just face two different ways. Because they were actually close enough, so so right now you would be talking, that would be like right here. So this was actually, it's totally different. We just, you guys just came in this gate right here, mm -hmm. and we went right there, right to the right on that little field was where the second house was. Oh, wow. You know, there's rumors there was tunnels under here and stuff like that. We haven't found them. We went looking for them, uh, but we haven't found them. But there is rumors that these houses were connected by tunnels. And you were talking about a chef who might have... There's a rumor about that, too. There's a rumor about a, a chef who committed some outside at the Edward right slash murder. And then also, uh, there was a murder here in 2005. So uh, recently. So pretty recently. Yeah, there was a murder here. It was a setup. There was somebody all uh, so many money. It was like a mob hit. They lured somebody here. I actually knew him. His name was Rob McKelvey. <clears throat> Ironically, I wound up here and I actually grew up with him and his sisters. Ironically, and they lured him here. He owed somebody money, and then they uh, they eventually murdered him here. They said they attacked him over here first. He ran out the door, and then there was a little pond out there, and then they wound up trying to drown him. Then they finally murdered him, and then there was rumors that he uh, they burned parts of his bodies in the furnace in the basement. The house was getting redone at the time, so it was planned perfectly. The furnace was leaving, so they did. The murder actually happened before the furnace was out. The murder happened, the furnace went. No one knew about it. They didn't know about the murder until after the furnace was gone. New furnace was in and no evidence. No evidence. Wow. So they, what did they attack him in this front area? They attacked him right, in, right here in the hallway here. <clears throat> yeah, the story goes they tried to attack Rob right here first. Uh, Rob was tough. He was, he was a tough guy. He fought him off, took off, apparently took off out the side door eventually, um, it took towards the pond. I guess they attacked him out there too, So, but this was the first spot. And they actually cut his body up in here? Yes. Where, where did that happen? Some in the basement, some in the kitchen, and the basement. We have picked up paranormal stuff with Rob here too. <clears throat> I would imagine that yeah. that would be a pretty big... Some experience yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be a lot of blood too. Yep, there was. It was. It was here. It was. It was actually. They, you know, it was all planned. The kitchen over there. Uh, there's some drains in the kitchen, <clears throat> and then uh, then it went to the basement. There's drains in the basement too. So it was kind of planned and executed, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, we have picked up Rob here at times, doing ghost hunts and stuff. We picked up Edward. We picked up Balthazar, and we picked up. Uh, one or two, a couple of females here too. Who would the women be? Uh, we think one is Edward's wife, which is Frida, and Matilda, which is Balthazar's, one of Balthazar's wives. That's who we think they are. We pick up a lot on the second floor, and then sometimes in the ballroom, and sometimes on the third floor. So different parts of the house. So what's, I think we were talking about the like closet where kids were abused upstairs. Yeah, and then there's rumors that uh, they used to get punished in the closets and on a, a, upstairs they used to be put in a closet, punished, locked in the big closets, and, and that was their punishment back in the day. And ironically, when we were doing a haunted house, we had a scene where we put people in the closet, in one of the closets, not knowing that that was done back in the, the Chrysler days. Wow. <clears throat> and what happened was, the customers were getting stuck in the closet. So we shaved the door. And then the next day, after we shaved the door, we test, tested it 110 times and fine, put somebody in there, the door kept on getting stuck. So we were like, what's this all about? So we stopped doing it. Sure enough, a couple of weeks later, someone bought us an article that they used to do that, punish the kids back in the day. Wow, that's very ironic. Crazy timing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And when it just happened, like right after we finished the haunt, someone brought in an article and said that they used to punch the kids in the closet. Jesus. So how did it become like abandoned and empty? Between the Kreishes and after them, the Andrew Vets bought, took over here after 
uh, the crisis around here. Andrew Fetch was another big family here in, in this town. They had it for a while, and then there was a period where it went missing, where no one knows what, who was living there. Yeah. Getting a lot of third floor today. Yeah. So there was a time here when they think this house was vacant, and there's a, we were talking about this earlier off camera, that we think there's a spirit outside that we nicknamed the hairy man, disheveled. So we think in the time frame where no one was living here, that he was a vagrant here. <laughs> so I, I am catching that too. <laughs> and uh, so the rumor goes that the spirits in the house won't let this hairy, disheveled spirit in the house, so he, he roams the property outside. We think he was possibly living here in that time frame. Strange. So this is the bar room. This is, we picked up. Uh, things in here too. We've actually put a lot of stuff in windows here. I, I do concerts here, we do, we do all kinds of events. I have a stage out front and a stage in the back. And uh, I'm my, cam you know, my camera guy running around taking pictures. I don't know, three weeks after the event, he sends me a shot, full figure, in the window looking out the back. Looks exactly like Bowser's Alcrisha. Just with a little skinnier face, beard, dressed up in a suit, tie, white shirt with a female sitting next to him with an old bonnet hat on. Oh, <clears throat> That's crazy. And he took a picture of the band. You got the, you got the drums, you had the guitar player, you had the bass player, and you had, you had this figure in the window looking right out at the band. And uh, if you match it right up to Bowser's picture downstairs, exact, just like him, a skin, little skinnier face, that's it. Jeez. So we picked up the stuff like that. We picked up faces and windows. That woman in the window photo is really creepy. You've seen that one? Yeah, right? that one's wild. Yeah, uh, we got that one. We've caught footsteps, a lot of footsteps, moans and groans. We were here a couple of times, like I said, in the basement. Uh, it happened one time we were down here shutting off the water for the winter. I just heard some steps over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we were shutting off the water downstairs in the basement, three o'clock in the afternoon. Me and my assistant went down there Waiting for the plumber. I heard female screaming, kids screaming upstairs, footsteps. Didn't get freaked out many times here. That was one of them. Left. Came back with the plumber four hours later. So we were in the basement, same spot, working on the pipes to shut the valves. Same thing happened again. Shut the valves, skip down. We got out of here as fast as we can. <laughs> uh, another time, I came here once. We were doing an event. I was going on the road to work a couple of events. I came here about midnight, me and my assistant, me and her come in the gate, we pull up to the front of the house, back up the car, had a bunch of chairs I had to drop off, I drop off the chairs, and I'm bending down, and she taps me on the shoulder, she goes, Rick, the radio just went on. So I'm like, all right, so the radio just went on. It's just as soon as we backed up the car, I'm backed up to the front of the house. She goes, the radio just went on. I said, so? She goes, Rick, here's my keys. <laughs> There's no keys in the car. And I, I, thought she, I thought she was playing with me, so I walked down the stairs, I look in the car, I walked, I look in, as soon as I get there, I look in, there's no keys in the car, the music went off. <laughs> and there was no one here, it was like 12.30 at night, I was like, Psh. <laughs> Two the rest of the chairs on the thing, I got out of here. <laughs> I mean, I was in a, but, but weird things like that do happen, electronically, lights sometimes go off in here, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, footsteps. We did drive in movies here during the pandemic, because that was the only thing we could do. So I remember one time, standing here, I was using the room downstairs, the main dining room area where the table was, as an office, and it's raining. The rain was coming and going. So I'm sitting there with my partner. Everybody else was outside. And all of a sudden, we're, we're the figuring if we're gonna go, you know, if we're gonna make it happen tonight. All of a sudden, we're looking at, on our phones, we're checking the weather. All of a sudden, me and him jump up, we go, all right, it's missing us, let's go. As Soon as I said, let's go, I get up, he went that way, I went this way, and a big black mask came right down the staircase. <laughs> the minute I said, let's go, a big black mask came down and went right out the front door. And I stood there and I thought it was him, he thought it was me, he went that way, I went this way, and I went right down the middle. And it went right out the, right out the hallway towards the door. Like we were like, all right, let's go, we're doing this. And it went right out the door. Um, other stuff, you know, we've uh, 
stuff sometimes if you all the way on third floor, feel like you can't breathe once in a while. You know, just picking up a lot of voices. We pick up voices, we pick up shadows. I mean, the first thing we caught was, we caught seven faces in seven windows. What? The first thing we ever caught here. Seven faces? And seven windows facing this way. This whole side. Me too, and I keep, it's coming from the third floor. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Jesus. Third floor is probably boiling right now. Uh, Oh, yes, we're roasting up here. Yeah, 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 it's hot. It's hot. So, it, uh, yeah, so seven faces and seven windows. First came here. I've been here about, I don't know, eight, nine years now. So we catch all kinds of stuff here. What do you think are the, like, most active areas or, like, parts of the house? Uh, it kind of varies. This room, we catch stuff. This room right across the way here, the green room, we call it. We catch some stuff there. We can take a walk over there if you want. Sure. Let's check this green room. Um, see, this, is, this, 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 this is weird. Okay, you guys got your kind. Look at that wet spot. Does that look like a wet spot to you? Yeah. Okay, that is absolutely dry as could be. And it happens here and the floor right under us. Really? What? It happens here and the floor under us. And there's, it's obviously not coming from there's the room. There's nothing coming from here. It's always in this room and the room directly underneath. That was the room downstairs where we set the ceiling was having trouble with the ceiling. And this is totally, absolutely 100% dry. What's crazy is from it's just, I this don't know. camera, it looks like the outline of a body. That you can make out like a head and like an arm, two legs. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. And then we're, 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 I have no idea. It comes and goes. That does? This comes and goes. Doesn't stay there. I might come here next week and it's gone. It's what, do you, what do you think it's coming from? I don't know. Me and my, me and my father, we, we look up, we go up here, we feel. There's nothing there's no, coming from the ceiling. No water here. Bathrooms, all the bathrooms are over on that side. And, and this spot is here and then the room right below us. That is so so oh, strange. Just, just it's the weirdest thing. So this room's an active room. This too. room's active, female. This is where I thought I heard the footsteps coming from earlier. You guys were right down. You guys were right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This this is where we we think. We say because Bowser's house. Okay, this was Charles's house. Edward's house was right to our left. Bowser's house was out here, up. So we think it's we, we call it Matilda because that was one of Bowser's wives. That we, the female in here, we just nicknamed her that because there's a rumor that she's looking out here trying to find their house was back here. Mm. Straight up here, up on the hill. You can't see it, yeah, but there was another little hill back here. So we actually had three out, three mansions here. There one, one here, for two sons here, and then the father, Balzar, was back there. You can definitely feel energy in this room, I would say. These two, the doll room. Oh yeah. Then we got the doll room. Did you guys go in the doll room yet? <laughs> yeah. What's the deal with that? That was actually a scene that we did with a haunted house. We were going to take it down, and I decided let's leave it up. It fits. So we have people that are kind of donating dolls to us. Like, I just got a couple in the kitchen that are down there that I got to put in here. So it became like a thing for us to collect creepy dolls, put it in there, and make a scene. and. You did a great job. See, very it is very scary. It's very <laughs> creepy. Man. You're gonna be going there. You guys went there already, right? <laughs> and then we put we put the uh, doll watcher here. Yeah, that that thing freaked that me out. That freaked you out, right? Yeah, I don't like how it's like yeah, life so, size. <laughs> so we did it, and I was like, you know what? Let's let's keep it. This was actually a food running thing right to the kitchen at one time. So we kept it up, and you know it goes with the whole. The whole thing, and we get dolls donated, and we put them up in here. Yeah. It's so crazy to think. It's like there's like a child spirit, like that's coming in and out of like these two rooms, like a woman and a child. They, 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 they did lose a few childs, a few kids here. Yeah. Really? Uh, Henry and Alfred. There was actually three, and I've been told by uh, paranormal people, they follow me around, they look at me, they tug on me. 
They follow me around. They look. They joke with me. They move things on me. I've been told you got you ever like put something down in this I say yeah, all the time around here. You know, I'll, put, I'll, I'll put something down. I turn around, it's gone. No, you just think you're going crazy. I just think I'm going nuts because <laughs> I'm running around. It's five and a half acres. So they're telling me, no man, it's the kids playing with you. They said, you ever feel one of my paranormal guys keeps telling me, you ever feel them tugging? I go, I'm always cutting lawns or doing something around here, and. uh they're like, no, the kids follow you. So the two main kids was Alfred and Henry. They died on the property between the two sons and the father. So they say, we actually had a really creepy experience with a kid. Second year, the first year, the first or second year we're doing the, haunt, the hayride. I have a guide on there. I have my driver who's driving my hay wagon. He's driving the hay wagon. He comes back, comes back up to the box office, and he tells me, you gotta stop that little kid in the white shirt between the barns from running in front of the hay wagon. So it was my partner, Vinny's father. So I said, Steve, what are you talking about? He goes, the kid keeps on running in front of me. He's a little kid, about this big. I says, well, how old do you think he is? He goes, he can't be more than like 10. I'm like, Steve, we didn't hire you no 10 year olds. <laughs> I have a guide on the back. This girl, my girl Carla, she was the guide on the back. She's seen it too. So she goes up to me and goes, yeah, you got to stop that kid. I says, well, at the same time. They come around, they go back to the box office. I'm like, I said to my partner, I go, well, what's the youngest kid we got? We hired here for the hunt. He goes, 19, and she's right there. Happened four times. All you see was a flash, white T-shirt, shooting in front of him right back here, on the, right back here between the two barns we have on the, on the back of the property. Just about that guy's height? <laughs> probably not even, yeah, probably something like that, yeah. <laughs> Great. Yep. So you got like every type of spirit. We basically. got all different kinds. Of That's crazy. Yeah. You know, sometimes we hear we'll, we'll be hunting, and all of a sudden I hear Eric, and I'm like, I, I never heard Eric before. You know, there'd be some weird names pop up sometimes we catch. Do you think the portals that were open through the Ouija board is also allowing other I, ghosts in here? I believe so, but my, my personal feeling, Bowser Christ is here, and he's letting in who he wants and blocking out who he doesn't want. Yeah, I guess if he doesn't let the scraggly guy in, he's it's, got kind of a grip. <laughs> and I, do, I said we just got we just got a, a picture out there. My nephew got one the other day, like a week ago, two weeks ago, right outside. I'll actually show it to you guys. It's another thing. I had I had travel channel come here for one of the shows, and I had evidence of stuff we caught. We caught black masses coming up, going to a wall and down, right? Bunch of stuff. We caught it, put it on disc film, came here. Sat outside with him right at the table right outside. Took out his computer. My paranormal guy, Frank, gave it to me. Checked it, gave it to me. I checked it. I brought it here. Puts it in the computer. Nothing on it. Really? Nothing on it. Please don't do that tonight. I tell him, <laughs> I tell him take, take, the, take it, go back to your hotel. Goes back to the hotel. Plays at the hotel. It pops. It pops. What the hell? So, so it knows how to mess with stuff like that. Whoever's so here. Comes back here the next day, says, I looked at last night. Yeah, I, I, I might use this, I might use that. Puts it back in here. Nothing showing here. That's Jeez. wild. It's almost like something doesn't want uh, all stuff going out. out. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, on. you're right. I don't know if it's good to have you down here with us, Rick. Apparently this thing has a has a tendency to come out when you're around. This is where we were one time. I was here with a uh, SI Live, which is a local newspaper video edition of it. One of the paranormal guys here, he pointed this way and said, "Well, the, the shovel's hairy guy. He was right outside that wall right there." And that was like two weeks, a couple of weeks after. One of our sensitive guys was outside and was told to get off the property by a disheveled, hairy guy. And uh, it just fit perfect. The stuff happened. That's uh, so crazy. And this thing over here has got, we got handprints on there that we have no idea where they came from. I don't know if you really? guys can see it. Oh, yeah, I see it. Right here. They've been here for a, long, for a while. And we can't get them off, and we don't know where they came from either. Just a weird, uh, Looks like just like a little, kind of looks like long fingers, right? Yes, it does. That's right? Like really long fingers. You can see, I can see it a lot now, the way you just had it. Uh -huh. You can see it's like really oh, long, yeah. really long. Back here, it doesn't look that long, but the way you just did it. 
Great. So something with long fingers down in the basement. Long fingers. That, that, <laughs> and that's been there for a while. It's a creepy name for and a then, ghost. <laughs> yeah. And then also, like with the murder with, with, with Rob, with that hit, they apparently put the body in here for a little while. So freezer thing, and then this is where the fur this is where the furnace was, where the new furnace is in. <clears throat> this is the new furnace, but that's what he apparently burned a lot of parts of his body was in the, the furnace right there. Do you think there's any part of his body that might be left? I, I don't think so. They uh, well, they actually found oh, some uh, <laughs> a, a behind it. I forgot that thing was there. I turned around like oh. F <laughs> <laughs> I don't really just look at this. Wow. They've pretty much burned a lot of, of, of Rob's body, unfortunately. And then they found this, they, they apparently found his teeth and stuff in the well. There's a well back on the back of the property. And somehow they got led to the well. They think it was just burnt and then some stuff in the well, which they all, they recovered everything. Wow. <clears throat> so I guess at the end of the day, you would definitely say this place is haunted. I would say this place is haunted. I've heard things, seen things, felt things. Actually, recently, one of my guys was out in the back who's been doing a lot of work around here. He just got a little scratched up on his leg, uh, which was kind of weird because I haven't had that happen here once before. I was an actor. The first year we did our haunted house a few years ago, one girl got apparently pushed with no one there and one got scratched. And I went in and I talked to 45 actors. I said, guys, I've been here a long time. If you guys disrespect, stuff's gonna happen. And stuff did happen right before that happened. And then after that, nothing happened. But he just got scratched a couple weeks ago out in the back. He, he, he had a bunch of scratches on the back of his leg. Mm, great. Outside though. What Not doesn't inside. happen here? There's all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Jesus. There's a lot of action. You got aliens and Bigfoot too? <laughs> The hairy guy. You do have the hairy guy. Shit. <laughs> you got Edward Kreischer inside. You got all kinds of things. Wow. Well, I think I'm ready to get started, man. I am too. What do you think? I'm spooked, man. Me too. I mean, I've only been here for like two hours, and uh, we're already hearing stuff, seeing stuff. Still haven't even set up our stuff yet. No. <laughs> all right. Hey there, foolish mortals. It's your ghost host back again to shiver your timbers with a spine-tingling treat. Before we dive into the investigation, I'd like to rewind the footage and show you some terrifying paranormal activity that Colin and Connor experienced before the tour of the home. As it happened, the two were setting up their cameras and getting ready to film the interview when they began to hear screaming. Colin then lifted his shaking hand and pressed the record button and began to film. And what they captured was nothing short of a nightmare. Oh my god, bro. What the f***? It's like a kid crying. Mm. Oh my god, I'm on edge. Hello? Yeah, come on down and talk to us. Can you knock to let us know what room you're in? Can you make a really loud noise, please? Can you make a noise like this? So once again, guys, okay, I'm completely chilled even though I'm sweaty. Look at, I'm just setting up the gear right now. Like just taking our cameras out and putting new camera cards in them. Connor was in the kitchen just now and this light turned off for like a and I'm sitting here plugging in, I'm like, Connor? And you were like, what? And then as soon as I said that, we both heard running like, upstairs on the second floor and 
You just heard in that clip like a, ch a kid's mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, we haven't even set up or unpacked. And the thing is, it's crazy about this place. Nobody comes here. You can't really rent this place. Like people don't come here and ghost hunt all the time like other famous haunted locations. From the moment we've gotten in here, we have heard kids talking, loud footsteps, a, a scream. Like a bell. A bell. I, I don't know if it was a doll talking to us or what the hell it was. I hope it's not a doll talking to us. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so this is a little off the fly, or whatever the phrase would be. We're upstairs right now just finishing our B-roll shots. It's f***ing like 98 degrees in here, that's why I'm sweated through my shirt already. We haven't even begun filming. But while we've been up here, we've heard, I think, two sounds of a piano playing, like a ding, and then just now, a sound of like a f***ing scream, like ha, ah! from downstairs. Keep in mind we're on the top floor, so now we have to walk down to wherever the fuck that, oh, like, I'm hot, but I got goosebumps thinking about that. Cause whatever that was, we were filming the shot and we we're both like, <laughs> so, and the owner's not here. Nobody else is here. So I'm going to take this down. I'm just going to have you roll yep. as we go down just in case something happens. God, it's very hot. Okay, is there anybody here? I think we might have heard you scream just now. Let me go sit in the car for a second, cool down before we start filming. Please. All right, so we're just sitting in the car right now, cooling off, and we're fucking obviously parked here, staring at the house. The top light burned out right in front of us. What? The f yeah, isn't that fucking crazy? We on camera, literally on camera in the B roll that we just took, you can see that that light was just fucking on upstairs, and that is the room that has the children's uh, dungeon or torture closet. That fucking creepy ass light at the top of the house. <sighs> of course, it's like, what the fuck, man? I don't even want to go back in now. Like something's up there waiting for us to come back up. If that light turns off, I'm gonna shit a fucking brick. If any of them turn off again. Yeah, that's just absolute. That is absolutely nuts, bro. I'm once again not actually filming it. We're just sitting here cooling down, watching the premiere because it's a Monday, and the fucking light turns off. Now I don't know. I don't know if someone's in there, like a fucking homeless guy that broke in. I mean, we just went through the whole house. Yeah. We seen it but that just makes me very uneasy also this house looks fucking like evil very very Doesn't creepy <laughs> vibes all right guys if something else happens we will get back to you but otherwise we're just sitting here waiting for rick to get here yeah this might turn into a found footage film <laughs> you never know with this know. place well connor said something freaky where the footsteps were coming from is the doll room. well because colin was right here and i was in the kitchen which is Right through there. On the other side of that room, through that door. And the noises sounded like they were coming from like right up here. Okay, one more time. If you are here with us, maybe you're a kid, maybe you're not a kid. We're going to keep bringing out our toys and our tools. Can you maybe make a noise or use your voice or do something for us so we know that you're still here? Even louder. This place is freaky. I'm like really scared. I know. <laughs> I'm really scared. Because the thing is with the Ouija portal, no one really knows what's in this house or who. I feel like something's about to happen. Hello? You hear the 
supposed to get his? Hello? <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> what the f was that? Can we talk about that? What the f was that? That, that sounds sound like something from the basement. Oh my god, you're right though. Because oh. I get his and then like, boom. Dude. Every you year have the my worst body. chills I've ever seen. Oh. What the f is going on? Dude, look at my goosebumps. I'm telling you, I can just feel it come into the room. That's why I said that. I just got like a massive, like, oh. splitting headache. <laughs> my fing hands are shaking. Dude. I mean, think about it, a guy was murdered right here. The owner I took his life on size. <sighs> what the f this, man? The f messed up part is I don't know any of the history yet because we haven't gotten the tour. You're the only one who knows the history of this place. So when you're freaked out, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> What? That's was a that? straight up person f***ing talking. <gasps> There's no one else <laughs> This is a gated property. This is a gated... Look at guys. Oh. Continuous shot. The gate is way where those street lights are. This is a fully, like, fenced off property. We are the only ones here, too. Like, there's no caretaker, there's nobody on premises except us. This is just a f***ing handycam shot. Literally, I just started filming because this light flickered. And then we heard running, then we heard children, then we heard a bang. Now we just heard... <laughs> and we haven't even started! We haven't even set a single thing up! This has to be the most activity we've ever gotten before we even start the video. They're very eager. I'm like, scared though. What the hell are they gonna do tonight? If they already did this, well, what I mean, else can they do? There was a man that was like brutally, brutally. Right bad. here, Connor. Right, right here. here. And then chopped up into pieces and then burned in the basement. What was that? Was that his? Yes. Oh my god. What? And I just started like tearing up. That I, sound? Yeah. Like a body being drugged off. Fuck you. Oh my god, like, I got the chills like, again. Like this. Dude, legit, that's, you nailed it. That's, ex oh my god, guys. <laughs> Goosebumps. And what was that little scream thing just now? <laughs> Dude, we've been here all fucking night i know i haven't heard we haven't heard a single noise like that the whole night we've been here for like two and a half hours so far just getting b-roll and stuff but then it was, like, it, was I, it was like some someone being like drugged drunk on the floor and then it was like another kid like crying upstairs yeah. <laughs> oh my god Okay, we gotta end this clip and set up the other cameras. <laughs> we just sitting here the whole night. I'm just gonna let this roll while we set up the other ones. So, time! that noise in the basement again? demon videos and really really dark videos in the past this has to be one of the thickest energies i've ever felt what the f <laughs> yo 
Oh, dude, what is that, Connor? <laughs> my every hair on my body is on end, and it's like 94 <laughs> degrees in here. Connor, what is that, bro? Dude, I don't know. It's coming from all every direction. Oh, yeah, it's him. Ah, yes. Hello again. It's me, your ghost host. Are you ready to see just how many of the 999 spirits showed up to talk to Colin and Connor that night? Are you ready to see the ungodly portal open before your very eyes? Are you ready to hear the frightening sound of an angry ghost? Well, hop in the hearse, because it's time to go. What you're about to see is real. <laughs> I'm ready getting goosebumps. This place is really f***ing scary. It's a past midnight now when we're starting. And I just have to say, I know we say that, oh, this place is the scariest, blah, blah, blah. They keep ramping up. I don't know what's happening to us. This place specifically, I don't know if I've ever really felt as on edge, you know, I mean, I have, but in a while, like, not, I'm not afraid of it, but I'm like, I just don't know what the hell it's gonna do because I'm so jumpy, you know? Like a huge bang, something being thrown across the room, a scream, I'm like, if there is somebody here, they've already been making their presence known and now it's completely just Connor and I again. We're the only ones here on the property. Rick left and he just told us how to lock up. So we're the only ones here in the Chrysler house. It's really strange. I wanna to try to figure out if Edward was killed or if he took his own life. I wanna figure out who's here and I wanna just document the existence of these entities and energies here because there are a lot. And yeah. Connor, how are you feeling? This place is something else. Um, I mean, we're lucky to be amongst some of the first groups to be able to investigate here, so we're super lucky about that. But that leaves a lot of questions unanswered that uh, we need to find answers to tonight. And I just wanna say that this this place is definitely charged with energy. Um, I'm super on edge. That's the red button on the room. There's non-stop activity here. And I think this, this is gonna be a very interesting episode. Yeah. And last thing I'll say is that we have special access here Nobody has ever really done this place on YouTube. We're like really one of the first groups. I believe we are the first, but if not, we're one of the first groups to ever document this activity on the internet. And in fact, like Rick was telling us, I don't know if we got this on camera, they have not had a group in here to do a ghost hunt, first of all. Second of all, they haven't really been even in the house since last November, and it is July right now. Isn't that the switch for it right underneath it? You just saw this turn off. We got in my perfect because it was a red light. I, I wonder if this camera, one of these was shooting over here. Oh. And it was unscrewed. Yeah, look, the, what? It was unscrewed? Yeah, I, it was like this. And then I just <gasps> went back and had to re-screw it in. And I saw that turn off fuck? out of my peripheral. Of course, to start this off, we're gonna do a Ouija board. So if you know the story, obviously you do now after the interview of the Kreischers, Edward died. <laughs> Edward died, supposedly by his own hand. People suspect that he was killed. And so Charles had his body brought into this room. This is the portal room. People attribute this huge mirror in here to being a massive paranormal portal. I think just started going off like crazy. We're gonna do a Ouija board in here to begin the night. Which I don't, I'm, I don't know if it's a good idea, but. It, let's do it, man. So, unfortunately, it looks like when we left Hinsdale house in a hurry, if you haven't seen that video, definitely should watch what happened with the Ouija board. 
I think that we uh, left the plan chat packed in a suitcase and we didn't put it in the damn box. I'm hoping that's what happened. I'm really hoping we didn't leave the plan chat there, but we're improvising. We've got a plastic cup from the Kreischer mansion. Original piece of fine china. <laughs> and we're gonna do it like this. You ready? ready? Okay. To whoever's here in the house, we are welcoming you tonight to come speak with us. We are opening a portal and we are allowing you to come through whoever you are and we'd love to talk to you. So if you hear our voices, follow them. And if you wanna make any noises, you wanna to touch us, you wanna scream, you wanna throw something, you wanna take our batteries, take our energy, you can do that. But first, come play this Ouija board with us. Is there somebody in the, ha in the mansion with us right now? Plans. Right. cold from this direction. Charles Kreischer, Balthazar. Charles Kreischer, Balthazar. Nobody's on this property. It's a Monday night at 1 a.m. So there should, there's no rational explanation for what we just heard. And I'm a little concerned. My life ended fast. My life ended fast. <gasps> what? Oh. Is that Ron or Rob? Rob. Rob, no. are you here with us right now? Dude, did you hear that footstep? Yo, that is insane to get two spirit talkers the exact same thing at the exact same time. That proves that they're legit. I move things. Rob? I'm a good person. Almost on yes. I didn't even notice. I call that a yes. Yeah, me too. The eye is not as big as this on a plant chat. Okay. Is the Kreischer family here still? Dude, even with the lights on in here, this house is f***ing freaky. We haven't turned the lights off. We can't even figure out how to turn the lights off. I do feel this slightly moving. No oh. oh my god. The exact same time, patience What was and the woman's Mildred? room upstairs? I can't remember. Dude, what the f*** is going on with these spirit talkers? The exact same You're time they hit. The shit out of me. That scared the hell out of me. I've never seen them both hit at the exact same moment. If you see any of our lights in this room, you can go up and touch them.
Oh, I thought I just saw Question. Something. What's your question? I have no regrets. Okay, B. Keep pushing on this, whoever you are. If there isn't. Wow. One letter from my last name. There's any but it just said B on the Ouija board and then Brown. That's kind of weird, isn't it? If there's anybody here in the house with us, can you come into this room? Love to see you flicker those lights again. Doorway. Can you come into this room, doorway? Yes, if you're standing in the doorway. Why don't you show us that you're here and come in here? Or, you know what else? Share my message. You know what else is a doorway that he was saying? Remember in the interview he said he, they opened doors in here. Mm. They opened doors. Fuck. So maybe they're not talking about this door. They're talking about this one. It's creepy. Are you talking about the mirror? Is the mirror a portal? <gasps> Yo, actually, what the fuck, bro? Oh my god. What the f Yo. Hair on end. What the f Yo. Yo, what the f dude? Ask it to come through. Board! Board! Oh, and my light died! My light died! Board! Board! Yo. Holy f dude. Thank you, can you come through the mirror? Step towards us. Oh, f Oh, f Can you step away from the mirror? Did we just let a bad spirit into here? Did we just let a bad spirit into here through the board? It f***ing came through the portal? Yo, that's actually crazy. That's the moment that we stop using the Ouija board too, it says board. Come back to it. Do you not like us using this board? I am really shocked by that. And the light died. It's going even harder now. If you're standing by the mirror, the doorway, come on in so we can stop hearing that noise and we can come talk to you. Come over and play with the board with us, whoever we're talking to. Arthur. Arthur. There was an Alfred. Arthur. Arthur just came in. Arthur, is that you? We love talking. Remember he said he would like talk to spirits every night, do a seance in this room. Yes. What the hell? Or we love talking. Or we love... Almost. Almost. Like it's almost through. I'm scared. I was going to say we love talking like whatever's in the house. Whoever we co just conjured, maybe we fucking let like five people in. Okay, if you're almost through, you gotta stop and come over. You gotta come away from the mirror. Looks like it's like standing right on top of it. Footsteps. <gasps> what the? 
Okay, step away from the mirror, please. I think that whatever just came through the mirror was so f***ing strong of a signal that it just tripped the entire REM pod and it will not shut off now. Can you see us? Where are you? I'm feeling so weird right now. How many spirits are here with us? Shut the f*** up, dude. You should dig here. Where are you? Beside? They're beside us in that room? Through the doorway? Are you out in the hallway? Three. Oh, I didn't even notice it was moving. Three. So there's three spirits here. Busy. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. So at this point, Connor and I are gonna do... We're listening. This point, we're gonna... Dancing. Yo, do you actually feel the cold? There's somebody that came into the hallway. Where are you? Is this a member of the Kreischer family? No, it's not. No, it's not. <sighs> Who is it then? There's bad energy. Oh my god. And it's cold. It's cold right here. What the? Cold right fucking here. Avoid this energy. Avoid this area. There's bad energy. And remember a bad spirit here? Like it came through. God. Um. I don't know if this caught it. I swear to God, I just saw a flash. Ooh. Yo, dude, I don't that's, know why. I that's can't. right where I was going to point at, Cutter. I saw. I just saw a shadow of a hand like this. I'm not even with you. Like, go like that, right there, in that little light area right there. And right when I was about to say that, and I was pointing at it, the music box starts going off crazy. Okay, so at this point in the Kreischer video, we're gonna skip 15 minutes ahead. But for right now, Connor and I are gonna pause 
and finish our Ouija board session for our Ouija documentary. So if you want to see what's about to happen, go watch that episode once it's live. Hey there, ghost host again. During Colin and Connor's Ouija session, which they are unfortunately waiting to release until a further date, they got one specific spirit to respond to a question that proved to be very relevant. Who is this that I'm speaking to? Henry. Hello, Henry. After closing their session, the two decided to call the event manager, Rick, whom they interviewed earlier, to see if the name Henry had any relevance. And they were not prepared for what they were about to hear. Are you there? Oh! Yo, I'm not tripping. Oh no, it's this one. F they've been in here the whole time. The piano. And this room talks to you. Oh, you're right. This one's been going off and... Oh, that's me. Yo, this is the window where the guy got pushed. He was telling us somebody got pushed out of this window. I just got huge chills when I walked into this room. What's the significance of this room? Shot. Shot. Edward. B. Oh. I didn't even connect that at the Ouija board. Oh, it's in here with us. Balthazar. When we did the Ouija, I did not connect Balthazar. Oh, I got f***ing chills. Amazing. Balthazar Kreischer and B for bricks. The Kreischer bricks. Balthazar, give us a sign if that's you. Play the piano for us or move a chair. Pull a chair out and sit by us. You can do it, Balthazar. At this point, I think we need to go up to the second floor. <laughs> I think they agree. Okay, so before we move on, I'm going to call Rick. And I wanted to ask, because I thought I remember an H name for the child. But I can't remember. Can you? No. Who it was? If it's Henry, I'm going to flip. Honestly, I am going to flip. Let's see if he's up still. Hey, Rick, I just wanted to call you and uh, ask what the names of the children uh, were who died in the house. Alfred and Henry are the two that we know died on the property. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Oh, I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're there. Alfred and Henry are both there. The, the two kids running around there. That has to be one of the craziest pieces of evidence I think we've ever captured, like right now. Where'd you, where'd you get it? In the parlor room, just right off the front. Right in the front room downstairs, first floor? Yes. Yep, that's the ones that they say that they follow me around and they tell me, and that's the two main, the two main kids that died on the property. Oh, Rick, <laughs> you are freaking me the fuck out, man. That is crazy. <laughs> um. Uh, that was great stuff. Great you, stuff. Before I'll let you go, but do you know by chance how they died? Disease, I, I believe. I don't know if both of them or one of them. Well, me. It used to be like uh, it was a disease in the 1800s that a lot of your know, kids died from. Okay. I believe it was uh, some kind of disease. Yellow fever, tuberculosis, something, something like something that. Something like that, yes. Well, we'll ask some questions and try to figure out even more, but I'll let you, I'll let you get going. I just want you to know how crazy that is. Also, the big mirror is definitely a portal. I love it. I love it. You, yeah. You, you, tell, you tell me if you, you find out before me how they passed away. They okay. might tell you first. <laughs> well, we are going to try. <laughs> All right, okay. You Thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, bye. Holy <laughs> Holy <laughs> What the f What the f what the absolute f**k? Henry, 
Because I thought I remembered like him talking about a kid named Henry, and that's why Me I too. Like, kept emphasizing on it, but I didn't know for sure. I remember during the tour that the guy was giving us that he, there was something with like an H kid name. Mm -hmm. And so when I heard Henry, I wanted to like make sure that that's what it was. But like I felt like that's, that is what the kid's name was. And now we know for a fact that was what the kid's name was that died here on the property. The kids want to play. And it's crazy. You've gotten here before like a kid saying... I want to be your friend. Yes. Yes. In the attic where they were locked up. There's tons of devices going off. This is f mental. It's like I've been saying the whole time we've been here that it's like I'm hearing like a child talking like all around me, like a child yeah. crying upstairs. Like it doesn't sound like heavy footsteps either. It feels more like childlike footsteps upstairs as well. Well, okay, let's pack our shit up. Let's go upstairs because they're here. They're f here. They're oh, yeah. here. <laughs> That's weird as f that we both started doing that. I voice. know. What the f stuff? We're I gotta crazy. get away from yeah, you, man. I've been crazy. around you too long. <laughs> okay, so we're upstairs now on the second floor. It's one. One thirty-seven in the morning. I can make it cold. Please. Please. It's so hot in <laughs> here, man. This IR light's dead already. Weird. But we're gonna try and use the spirit box up here before we move up to the third floor for a brief DR60. Can't be up on the third floor too long. It's like 98 degrees. It's already like 95 here. It's very, very it's probably hot. probably 102 up there, honestly. No breeze. No. It's pretty humid too. So we've got devices everywhere. All right, Henry, Alfred, we came up here to speak with you. I think you're up here or somebody, we heard somebody running around up here. Don't need to be afraid of us. We're not afraid of you. We're not gonna hurt you. We're not gonna punish you. We just wanna talk to you. If you see any of our little toys, you can go up and touch them. Or we would love to hear your voice. Yeah, Henry, like we said downstairs, we just want to be your friend. You don't have to be afraid of us. Can you show me where you're at? You over here? Is the woman here? I'd also love to see you slam one of these doors. If this is Balthazar's wife, can you make a knocking noise somewhere? If this is one of the kids, Alfred, Henry, can you make a knocking noise? Can you make a knocking noise like this? In whatever room you're in? Keep going, it's in. Creepy. Oh! oh! That was not from right here. Henry, is that you?
Why does, why does it always have to be a f***ing doll room, man? I know, and why do the kids creepy... walk over here and what are we coming to do we're coming to grab the spirit box because we just heard knocking and we're bringing the spirit box to that room we just asked the kids I to knock I just saw something out there. shut up dude photograph the photos of the ghosts here maybe it's right there you're right oh, oh, oh. Over there. Did you hear that? Hello? Okay, let's do the spirit box over here. F it. Even though I've heard a ghostly child knock twice in this room. It's like the chorus from hell. You saw me. Oh, you saw me? Didn't you just say you saw something over yes. here? Like, literally over here in this corner. You just said that before we walked over here. Dude. Alfred, Henry, or maybe Balthazar's wife. Sorry, I forgot your name. If you're here with us, we have this toy. And if you use your voice, we should be able to hear what you're saying. So when we turn this on, Give it power and energy, please. I keep thinking I see shadows. Please uh, speak to us. Just use your voice and talk. I really don't like what you're saying. You keep seeing shadows behind me. I just, I keep seeing weird little things, man. Henry, Alfred, if you're here, can you say your name? Henry. You hear that? Can you say it again, louder and clearer? 17. Maybe you could say hi. Hey. hey. Please say your name to us. Hey, something's tickling your leg. Something's tickling your leg? Henry, are you here with us? Henry or Alfred? Oh, yep. Same male voice. Or maybe this is Balthazar. Or Charles. I keep thinking this little guy's gonna turn his head Seriously. and stare at me. I like you. Good. Can you say one of our names? It's Colin and Connor. I keep feeling like I'm getting like a stroke on my leg. That's what I'm saying, like, like oh my god. Are you touching us on the leg? during your childhood? Were you abused? Is 
that what happened? You were locked in the closet? Mm-hmm. It's the same male voice. Mm -hmm. Henry, Alfred, what did you die from? Did you get sick? I got a way different feeling walking out of here. Definitely. Mm -hmm. How did you die, Henry or Alfred? Alfred? Maybe you guys are over here. Hmm? That's a Balthazar. I saw so. And Ow. I heard something go off out here. It also said, Ow! Like a child saying, Ow! Maybe the abuse. Who's here with us in the house tonight? Say your name. We just want to know. We're not trying to be mean. Mm -hmm. Can you please try to say it loud and really clear just once for us? No. Why can't you say your name? Do you want us to go up to the third floor? Uh-huh. Either yeah, up or uh-huh. Can you say third floor or attic? We'll go up. Crunch sure. Children. Oh! Children upstairs. Kreischer. Alright, well we're gonna head up there. Do you have anything else to say? Last chance. All right. I think he wants us to go upstairs. I think so too. So, let's not cut. Let's just walk up there with the DR60. I'll bring the spirit talker and this tripod. Maybe one REM pod. We'll leave the other one running. Okay, so we're up here. This is the closet where allegedly children were abused. They were locked in here. This was their punishment. So if Henry and Alfred are here, I'm assuming that they might be in here. I mean, there's a bunch of children's toys in here as well. So Henry, Alfred, we have a little toy here. If you speak to us, we should be able to hear what you have to say with our own ears. All right, if you are with us, can you tell me your name? Did you die here? Who else is here in the house tonight? Can you tell me who the disfigured man is outside? Look, I'm here. Well, I'm glad that you made it into the closet with us. Can you tell us what what happened? Why you stopped being alive? Did you not like when we were doing the Ouija board downstairs? Are there any bad people here? Mean people? Do you know what happened to Rob? What did they do to you in this closet? Okay, let's listen. Ready? Yep. All right, if you are with us, can you tell me your name? Did 
be a guy here, but also here in the house tonight. Can you tell me who the disfigured man is outside? Look right here. Well, I'm glad that you made it into the closet with us. Can you tell us what, what happened? Why you stopped being alive? Did you not like what we were doing the week before downstairs? Are there any bad people here? Mean people? Do you know what happened to Rob? What did they do to you in this closet? <laughs> that was a lot of shit. Yeah. It sounded like there was something, but I couldn't really make out what it was. Definitely, I'm not trying to even make it sound like, but it sounded like it went, demon. So, I don't know what that means. I'm not trying to do anything demon here at all. But you can't deny it sounded like that. Let's do one more before we go. Once again, can you say your name very clearly? Like, Henry, or Alfred. Were you killed? Who were we hearing running around earlier? What do you want to tell us? You can tell us a sentence or you can tell us your favorite color. If you tell us a color, we'll change our lights to that color so you can see it. Concerned. 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 That sounded like a fing piano. <laughs> That's very faint. The f I'll have to go listen to it. 100%. Oh. Who's walking around out there? Can you tell me where you are? You came back. I did a DR60 in here with the New York Post last November. And there's only been one other investigation that was done in between that one where I was in here and this one right now. That's fucking crazy. Yes, I did come back. Okay, before you go, can you tell me my name? My name is Colin, if you remember. If you say my name, we'll come back again. That's actually kind of crazy. You came back. If it was any other location, I'd be like, eh, no, it's the first time, but no, I actually did come back. It's weird, no one else has really been Seriously. here since then. All right, we're gonna listen. Once again, can you say your name very clearly? Like Henry or Alfred? Oh, I heard both. I heard Henry and Alfred. Dude, it goes Henry, Alfred. Oh my God, I don't want to delete it on this. Listen to this. Under the ground. Oh, you can tell us a sentence, or you can tell us your 
favorite color. If you tell it the color, we'll change our lights to that color so you can see it. that said my name or what the f it said but it definitely has said it's such a quiet whatever the person is that's speaking in here has such a quiet like, like a child that's in trouble it? yeah like they're like trying to whisper like Alan, Alfred, Henry you know it's not like they're actually like hey I'm Henry it's like Henry Alfred. like they're like sad. It said here, concerned. You came back by hurting. Not very good words, but almost like they looked forward to me coming back yeah. to see them because they're like stuck here. You know what I mean? But I mean, it's it's two forty five in the morning. I say we go down and do an Estes session in the bloody basement. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to walk downstairs after hearing that piano and those noises. Me either. The f is about to happen. But I also now. don't want to stay up here because it's so f it's hot. It's like a hundred <laughs> something degrees. I swear to God, you can see the sweat dripping off my f face, man. Okay. Well. Hello, folks. It's your ghost host again. Colin has informed me that he has a favor to ask of you, and it's very simple. If you wish to be entered to win a free gift bag from the channel, all you have to do is like today's video and leave him a comment in the comments section, not the live chat, that says, The Haunted Mansion Rocks. He's also told me to give you a countdown to do this, so I'm going to give you 10 seconds. If you haven't liked the video and commented before the countdown is over, I'm going to have to send one of my 999 friends to haunt you. So, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah, great work. It seems that you've escaped the gruesome hand of my spectral friend today. Thank you for watching today's video, and I do wish you a happy rest of your afterlife. Now, let's get back to the investigation. Okay, everybody, so. It's about three in the morning. Currently we are down here in the basement. Now if you remember, right over there is where the furnace used to be and that's where Rob's body was unfortunately burned. He was sliced up down here. They burned his body to ashes and then they dumped the ashes and his teeth and other assorted things down the well on the property. And this is where when I was filming with the New York Post, that light bulb right there, it's still burnt out burned out on camera in front of us at the end of the night so hopefully something else wild will happen down here because that was fucking creepy i swear to god if all of them burn out <laughs> if all of them burn out we're getting the f out of here yeah please get me out don't just scram <laughs> <laughs> i just run out and leave you here you're in here i've been here for oh, hours <laughs> i'm here <laughs> i'm like listening to the message it's like colin your friend left you get out Leave now. <laughs> He's in the car. <laughs> like, God, are you f***ing hearing this? You're <laughs> gonna be stuck here. <laughs> He's back at the Airbnb, Colin. He's sleeping soundly. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. Sun's up. He stopped and got McDonald's on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, Rob, Henry, Alfred, anybody here in the house, I'm gonna go under in this method. All you have to do is use your voice to speak with us. We just want to talk to you. Don't be afraid to talk to me, okay? I 
All right, Henry and Alfred, or Rob. This is Connor and Colin again. We just want to talk to you tonight. Are you here with us? Speak. I want to know who I'm talking to down here. Can you tell me your name? It really hurt. Is this Rob we're speaking to? If this is Rob, I want to say... There's multiple. Well, if Rob's down here, I do want to say I'm really sorry about what happened to you. Mm -hmm. There's a skeleton. Yeah, we heard that the men who killed you... For money. Threw your skeleton in the well out there. And yeah, they killed you. Bad business. They called you, killed you about money. How do you feel about that? Crematorium. Yeah, they burned you right behind me. Does that make you sad? He's coming. Who's coming? Who is it? Get out. Like a woman's voice. Oh, an anxious sounding man. Coming to get me. Rob, you don't have to be afraid anymore. No one can, I am, though. No one can hurt you now. If you're Happened here, already. Can you come light up one of these devices around me? Find the piece. Is there still pieces of you on the property? Where are they, Rob? Oh, very clear. Henry's here, too. Hey, Henry. Thank you for coming down to the Sticky basement. Sticky pudding. Sticky pudding. Don't know it's my favorite. Well, good. I'll see if we can get you some sticky pudding sometime. What else? I did died you? here. How did you die, Henry? We really want to know. Heart stopped. A heart stopped? Did you die from a disease? What's that? It's when you get really sick. It makes you feel bad. Is that what happened to you? Did you get really sick? I'm stuck. Man's voice. I'm stuck. Rob, you're stuck here? How can we help you? Man's voice, where'd God go? It's a tough question, buddy. Can you tell me how I can help you? Tears. I'm so tired. Me too. Do you like it when people come to talk to you? No. Why not? Annoying. Get out. We had a voice exactly like that. Get out! Is it because you're tired? That's an almost German sounding voice. Get out! Is this the Kreischer family? Is this Charles? Or Balthazar? My home. Alright, Charles. Edward, can you tell me if you were killed or if you killed yourself? <laughs> Across the property. You were killed? Woods. You got shot behind mm. your behind your company? The pond. Why did they kill you? Why not? They didn't like you? Walk with your gun. Do I need to protect myself? From people. People can be scary. Is there anything you want to tell us tonight about yourself? Or about your family? Fell out of. Fell out of what? What did you fall out of? Infatuation. You and your wife fell out of infatuation with each other? She found another man? Just tell me something. What do you want to know? Sir... Was there 
another like that another was there another what was there another what We're gonna have to leave soon. Suitor. Was there another suitor? There was. Oh, I feel f Ooh, a weird tingle all over my body. Right, it's been like a couple distinct voices. Almost a kid, a man, and like a man or two. They're all in different voices, but just weird. All right, we're gonna have to leave soon. Is there anything else you want to tell us? Stay close. Stay close to what? I'm entombed. You're entombed? Stuck to this place? To this home? Slit my... Slit your... Didn't wife. expect it good enough. Ooh, I feel cold too, man. I died. Ooh. Curious findings. Of course. Who is that? Is that Rob? I'm cursed. Why do you think you're cursed? Oh, silence for a second and then house. Like that. House. Ugh. Well, I'm not 100% sure on how to help you. Burn it! I am not gonna burn down the house. I don't have the money to pay for lawyer fees. <laughs> That's what I want. I'm not kidding either. It sounded like it was coming through a, a pay phone. That's what I want. Fucking creepy as shit, man. Well. We're gonna get going. It was very nice talking to you tonight. I'd love to come back and have good, more Good to share, or good to share chaps. Yeah. Don't talk, cheerio. Insights. All right. And then, thank you. You're welcome. Insights and thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for talking to us tonight. Even if we were being a little annoying at times, we come with good intentions. All right. And we'd love to talk to you again. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Oh my God. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. What happened? Um, Robert's definitely down here. I think that one of the, the Kreischer guy that got killed. Edward? Yeah, he said that he, he got killed. They fell out of infatuation. Mm, I remember hearing that, like, as a sentence. And uh, he wanted to know, was it the other suitor? Mmm. Yeah. So I remember hearing I suitor. It's like an old yeah. word. I'm like, suitor. I couldn't get any answer from Henry or Alfred on how they died. I think they were too young to understand. That's what how I felt too. Um, that last thing that was like, house, burn it. Yeah. And like, I'm cursed. It was like the same, like, angry. Yeah, I was like, well, I can't do that. Uh, That's fucking crazy. Don't though. got money for. Lawyers to get me out of that, dude. That's like, and a, then it said, "That's what I want." Oh yeah, that's crazy. I heard really, that. Really good. That's what I want. Method. It was really like from good. like a payphone. Yeah, like, literally, I can't even like accurately make it the sound, but it was all one sentence. That's what I want. It's sad though. I feel like Rob is stuck to this place. Rob stuck here. Yeah. I feel like Edward's stuck here. Yeah. Just from the, I mean, the overall vibes of tonight. And he didn't take his own life now hearing that. I don't think Henry and Alfred care that they're stuck here. I think they still do enjoy the house and enjoy people ha having people around to hang out with. Um, but I feel like, like the matriarch and the patriarch of the family don't really like uh, people being here, which 
Honestly, it's their house. I wouldn't want someone just fucking walking around my house in the middle of the night asking me a bunch of questions, but... It seems like they're trapped here. Yeah. Because as much as it's not all night, it hasn't really been like a negative evil no. haunting. It's definitely never felt warm and friendly. No. It's like these people are almost in anguish. Yeah. And that makes perfect I mean, sense. Burn the house, release the spirits. I mean, even That's think about crazy. like the Chrysler family built this city. Yeah. Built the houses, built the infrastructure, started a bunch of companies, and then the war hits and they completely changed the name of the town. They f them over. They f them over and like the family line lineage just kind of got like washed away and like this is the only thing that's left i mean the factory's gone like a, a, there's a bar left but like pretty much everything else is like it's very interesting no wonder that they all kind of flock here yeah it's like american horror story it's a bunch of ghosts that are trapped here seriously and just like the crazy things that have happened to the family and other people on this property i mean I feel like it's like a charcuterie board of spiritual energies here. Wow. Where you got a little bit of everything. <laughs> but. Wow. I will not be eating that snack. <laughs> I say we get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you need to be put to bed, boy. <laughs> a charcuterie board of spiritual <laughs> energy. That's fing awesome, man. <laughs> Wish I thought of that. That's dope. <laughs> Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. Right. Huh? Thank you, cool. guys. Thank you to Rob. Thank you, Alfred Henry, Balthazar, Charles, and Edward. You cannot follow us home. Portals are closed. Good night, baby. At the end of the night, both Colin and Connor knew that they had spoken to an otherworldly spirit, but they just couldn't tell who they had been talking to. Was it Henry? The young boy who died mysteriously in the upstairs of the horrifying house? Or was it Rob, whose body was incinerated down in the bloody basement? I guess they'll never know. But if you learned something today, it's that you can never be too careful. And next time you get invited to a spooky soiree at an old abandoned mansion, think twice. For you never know who just might follow you home. I do hope that you foolish mortals enjoyed our journey into the real-life haunted mansion. And now it's time for me to go. I'll be seeing you soon in your nightmares.